Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Leo. I'd like to welcome you to this video where we're going to take a basic look at Quixel Suite. So, for anyone who watches my videos in the past, they have noticed that I've had a long time between uploading videos. I'd like to apologize for that. However, I have been unable to upload videos. Now, with that said, this is going to be a mini series, a sort of introduction to Quixel Suite. And I would also like to add that if you have any uh, any suggestions on future tutorials, please feel free to drop them into the comments below. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at Quixel Suite. So uh, the first time you're on Quixel Suite, you're gonna just be presented with this menu bar right here. And we have these four icons and three of them are gonna be immediately available to us. The three that we're gonna have immediately available is going to be Endo, and this is the texturing side of the plugin. We then have the Dedo, which is the ability to create materials for our object and then we have the 3d which is basically just a 3d viewer um that's going to allow us to preview all this uh, all this texture and material information so let's go ahead and we're going to click endo here and we're going to start here and we're going to be presented with this new dialog box in, that appears there's only really one option that we need to look at here and this is launch and do project creator we're going to click that and then our final dialog box will appear that's going to allow us to set the basic parameters of our project here so the first one we have is the ability to import a mesh um, into the application and so if we have created a mesh inside 3ds max or maya zbrush or something along those lines we can bring that in and then when we click the three do uh, optional pair we're going to see that mesh and the textures and materials applied to it Below that we have the mesh group and there's only going to be one group here, you say one of one, so that's fine. Next up we have baked normals and so this is going to allow us to import normals in which we've already baked out from a, a different application. So say if you've been working inside 3ds Max and then you've exploited that model to ZBrush and then you've then generated um, you've then generated the normal map and we just want to add finer details, then you can go ahead and bring that in here. And then we have the flip Y option and this, this really sort of depends on the application in which this is going to be finally exported to, but we have that option to do so. Below that we have the resolution of the actual project. So this is 2048 by 2048. So that's, that's perfectly fine for what we're going to be demonstrating today. However, you can increase this to like a 4K texture or, or, or even or lower this to, to 1K and so on and so forth. And then below that, uh, we need to set the target. So the target is basically where the textures are going to be saved. I'm just going to go ahead and drop this to the desktop. And once that's done, we can go ahead and choose create new project. So once that's done, we're going to be, we're going to get the, um, this sort of flat normal color. This is a sort of bluey purplish type color. And then on the right hand side, you see it's created a bunch of layers. Now, anything, any number we create needs to be between these two layers. So what I mean is that any any normal that we're going to create needs to be on the layer between these so as you can see by default we have this layer one now i typically go ahead and delete this straight away this is completely up to you and then i then go over here and start to create our normals so with that said let's go ahead and look at this use here so as we've already deleted a the, the defaults the default uh, layer there we need to go ahead and create a new one so what we have here is this add new sculpt layer and if we press this what's going to happen is we're going to generate uh some new um some new uh layers here and then what we can basically do is go ahead press the b key and start to paint our normals here now you can see i have this grid here i'm just going to go ahead and remove that so i'm going to go to view and extras and i'll remove that and as you can see we are painting our normals now with that said we can go ahead and play with some of these options so you can see that we can increase the size and how deep these are contrast opacity softness and, and so on and so forth so i'm just going to increase some of these back up and pull these down and we can just start playing around with these now so you can see that we've generated a normal here and we also have these options along the top that's going to allow us to change the way that these normals interact so the first one is if we left click and, and hold, you're going to see we're going to get the options of, of, of the, the type of shape we set. So you see it's smooth, or we can choose chiseled and chiseled shadow. So for example, if we go chiseled, we're going to get a much more rough effect as opposed to smooth. We can go ahead and change the the, um, the, uh, the bend. So 
um, you, you can sort of play around with these and see see the different effects they have. So like a really useful one is the grooves, which is which is really useful for creating like sci-fi panels and, and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and put this back up. We can choose whether or not this is facing upwards or downwards. So if we choose down, you can see that it's sort of, uh, layering into into this. And then we have the curve type. And then we also have a, the different blend mode. So this is just like in Photoshop where we can use overlay, soft light, and so on and so forth. So we could also, there's different ways in which we can create, um, that we can create normals here. So if we wanted to, let's just exit this mode. or will go to the top layer here and uh, let's create a selection. And you see the moment we create a new selection, um, this is the, the the values here are going to disappear for these for this option this this painted option in which we just created now Just jumping back to that if we wanted to go ahead and Deal with those what we can do is we can these make a deselection here and if we wanted to we can drop back under the the uh, folder here and go back to The sculpt layer this very top one here, and then we can go ahead and, and continue to to play around with these values if we'd like so with that said, let's, let's just jump back up to the top here and we can go ahead and we can create a selection just like so. And then you see that this uh, now creates, or gives us this, um, this box here and we can go ahead and create a new scope layer or we could simply just click on this, uh, this square here and it will go ahead and generate that for us. So you can see it's gone ahead and generated all those layers for us already and what we can do, for example, we can go ahead and change this to those grooves and you can see that now we get a nice sci-fi panel type look. So we can go ahead and choose down or up and so on and so forth. And we can just play around with these and, and get a different, uh, different looks. And finally, we can, for example, use shapes. So we can go ahead, create a new shape. And you see that this this uh, the new box appears, and we press this, and again it will go ahead and generate a, a new set of layers. And once that has happened, the C will then generate um, the normals based on the shape. Now the great thing about shapes is that because they are uh, basically they are spline based, what that means is that if we modify them afterwards, the normal will actually update without losing any uh, information so what i mean is that if i now go to edit transform and we go ahead and choose the start you can see i can now hold down the or, or move this around however i'd like and the very moment i let go i press enter it's going to go ahead and, and generate those normals just how we expect them to and again we can go ahead and play around with some of these values and do whatever we like with these so i'm going to go ahead and set this to grooves increase the size so we can see a little better and so basically that's the basic ways in which we can create um our, our sculpt um normal normal detail now just before we end this video and, and we start to actually create something i'm just going to click this 3d button and you can see what this actually does here so we click the the 3d button it's going to go ahead and open up a window and I would typically recommend that you would have this on a second screen uh, and while you're working. However, I do not have a second screen to um, work with. So inside here, you see, we can move around. We can hold the, the left, uh, left alt key and left click and we can move around here. If we wanted to, we can hold the um, shift key and right click and we can move the light. And we can just go ahead and change the shapes here. So we can just have some basic control. And you can see uh, exactly what is going on here in terms of the normal map information. So with that said, that's the very basics of uh, Quixel Suite. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and create something very simple and very basic. And we'll also expand on some of the different ways in which we can generate normal information. So for now, I'd like to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.